Hey everybody, welcome to another amazing Photoshop CS6 tutorial. I'm your host, Buddy Blackford, and today I want to go over setting your preferences in Photoshop. And I'm going to go over these in a lot of depth, so there may be a few tutorials on this. Maybe one for each um, section, depending on how large they are and how many options they have. So let's get started immediately and uh, set our performance and everything like that to optimize Photoshop to what we want. So let's go under edit and we're gonna come all the way down to the bottom to preferences and then just click on general. That'll bring us to the uh, actual general preferences and then we can use the other ones coming through here. So, so something like general preferences, this might take a whole entire tutorial but something like cursors will only take like two seconds. So that's uh, how this is uh, gonna start going out. So we're gonna start out here. Um, we've got our color picker here. We can switch between the Adobe color picker and, or the Windows color picker. Now if I come out here, this is our color picker here. So this is the Adobe one and the Windows is uh, different. Um, I'll let you guys um, mess with those and then you can check out what the Windows color picker looks like so I don't have to keep on going back and forth between stuff. We've got our color picker here. The It's a HUD it says, H-U-D, and that means heads up display color picker. So um, we got hue strip, small, we got uh, hue, hue wheel. So right now it's set on hue strip which is the uh, um, default I guess you can increase the size if you would like or change it to a wheel so I guess I'm gonna come back over here see if I can click on this again see this um, this is the hue strip right here so you can make it larger or smaller or whatever you need to Let's go back into the preferences now um, image interpolation now I made a tutorial about these um, uh, when I in a few tutorials back, I'm not exactly sure which one it was in, but um, go through, go back and see if you can figure out because there's the different types of image interpolation here. Most of the time, you just want to keep it on bicubic automatic, and if you don't know what you're doing yet with these, just keep it on bicubic automatic. Now the little check boxes here, we have different options for everything. Um, auto update document open document documents um, it uh, creates a link between the open image so the one that you have open and the image file on the hard disk so it'll update that stuff for you if you've been working on it in another program beep when done makes a sound when an operation is complete and uh, most of the time you want to have that off because it's pretty effing annoying especially if you're working in a studio that's like a trick that we play on people sometimes is turn on their beep when done and uh, people that are new don't sometimes they don't know about these uh, preferences and stuff so they don't know what's going on and everybody gives them dirty looks it's awesome anyways dynamic color sliders um, previews the color effects within the slider bars so I mean, you can I don't know just previews so keep that on export clipboard uh, means that it transfers a uh, copied image to the operating system's uh, clipboard. So, like if we copied text in Photoshop, we could take that text and paste it into something like Google Chrome if we wanted to, or into like Notepad or anything like that. So, use Shift key for tool switch. Um, and it allows you to use the keyboard shortcut when two tools share the same slot in the toolbox. So when I come over to one of our tools here and hold, click and hold down, now it has the all these uh, tools share the letter I. So if I hit shift and press I, it's going to switch between the tools. So that's what that does. You want to keep that on should just use the hotkey for this but too lazy um, resize the uh, image during place which when you go to place an image like 
back in an earlier tutorial where he told you how to insert images, um, it'll allow you to resize it while you're doing that, which is really good because sometimes they come in way bigger than your canvas and you have to resize them down. And uh, they come in as a smart object too, so keep that on. Um, we got animated zoom, is that's the one that's next, yep. Um, so when you're zooming it like does like a smooth zoom in and out and, and um, enables your scrubby zoom so keep that one on zoom with the scroll wheel and uh, this is something that some people like and some people don't don't like so it's it this is up to you whether whether to have that on I uh, skipped this one zoom resizes windows so it forces the uh, image window to resize when the zoom is selected so uh, just keep that one off the zoom with scroll reel that's your preference and the next one is uh, zoomed clicked zoom clicked point to center and basically what that means is um, it centers where you're zooming on the uh, clicked location and sometimes that's helpful also so uncheck or check that if you would like enable flick panning now that um, enables like you can use uh, like quick flicks or quick mouse movements I guess um, over an image instead of holding down the mouse so that's uh, something I'll have to go over with you guys later on now if some of this stuff doesn't make sense to you then we'll go over it at a later time and then you can come back to your preferences and check it off or check it on if you like it or not. Um, the next one, very round brush hardness based on the heads up display vertical movement. So this is a new um, option that we have here and it pr pretty much uh, um, enables uh, the brush, brush hardness or softness when you're uh, vertically moving up and down in the uh, brush heads up display so that might not make sense to you now but you'll figure it out later on so just keep that on for now place or drag raster images as smart objects so it converts your rast raster image into a smart object when you place them or drag them which is very helpful because then um, it doesn't lose image quality so keep that on and then we got snap vector tools and transforms to pixel grid and uh, that's that basically just enables uh, snapping and that's new to CS6 too and then that's really helpful that was like when I was showing you like about the ruler and stuff like that so that's what snapping is now we got the uh, history log here um, you can uh, check this and like save your different, you can save metadata, text files, or anything like that. I usually have that off. I don't really need that. I never use it, and I've never looked at a history log before. But if you are into that stuff, then go ahead and turn it on. So it looks like uh, that took about eight and a half minutes. Um, let's stop there, and then we'll come into uh, another set of... Um, let's see what the next one. Yeah, this one has a bunch in it too. So I'll end here and uh, go on to the next set of preferences in the next tutorial. So um, keep watching for more uh, preferences options and how to keep your uh, Photoshop at like some uh, really high performance levels. So see you later.